we get set photos from big budget movies. Susbury is how long? A decent proposal gets a new writer. And movie pass. What the fuck? Welcome to Movie Emporium's News of the Day for July 31st, 2018, where we take news stories from the world of movies and give them to you on our podcast and episodes. The first news story of today is Suspiria. It's a movie that came out in the 70s, now is being directed by the director of Call Me By Your Name. It stars Dakota Johnson, who is known for the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, and is about a girl who goes to an academy that holds dark secrets. The story about this that makes it big is the original is about an hour and a half long, and which is, you know, normal for a horror film. But the director of Call Me By Your Name has decided to bloat the movie. Now the movie is two and a half hours long. You got that right. 150 minutes long. Whether this makes it a good movie, we'll see. But 150 minutes long for a horror film. Sorry about the thunder, by the way. 150 minutes for a horror film. That's a long movie. I know Call Me By Your Name was probably like two hours long. It was a good movie, but do we really need two and a half hours long? Comment below. Tell me what you think. So the next news story is Paramount Pictures. They have decided to go ahead and do a remake of Indecent Proposal, the original early 90s movie with Robert Redford, Woody Harrelson, and Demi Moore. The story is about a billionaire who decided that he enjoys the wife of another man's, another man who's her husband and weighs him $1 million to spend the night with the woman. It's directed by Adrian Lin. It was not a very good movie. It was, you know, Demi Moore falls in love with Robert Redford. Woody Harrelson doesn't like this. Basic story. So, just recently, the Paramount Pictures hired the writer of Girl on a Train, and now we got a movie, a remake. Now, they haven't announced who the actors and actresses are going to be in the movie or the director, but the idea of a movie like this is kind of like the idea of Girl on a Train or any type of remake of these types of movies. It's like if you would take, like, strip tease or something like that and make it a, you know, make a remake out of it. It doesn't make any sense, but we'll see what happens. Girl on a Train was a pretty terrible movie for right here. I didn't see it. So I'd be interested to see what Paramount does with it. If they make it a September movie, if they make it a summer movie, it sounds more like an October, January movie, but January is kind of in the midst of a renaissance, maybe put it in March. So we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't be. It's an indecent proposal, so it can't be the worst thing in the world, right? So tell me what you think, comments below. But So set photos were released for IT Chapter 2, Men in Black 3, and Wonder Woman 1984. IT Chapter 2 is a sequel to IT Chapter 1, takes the characters of the kids and moves them to adulthood 25 years later. The story revolves around them coming back to Derry, involves casts like Jessica Chastain and Bill Hader. Now I'm really excited, it's not much to see, but you get to see the whole entire cast. You get to see everyone from like Beverly to Mike. So I'm really excited for this movie. I loved it, chapter one. So we'll see what happens. I'm sure we'll start seeing more set photos. This is a leak set photo. So we see the characters walking down the street as I show in the picture. And then we got Men in Black 3, which is Chris Hensworth and Tessa Thompson, which you remember from Thor Ragnarok, which they made a great action duo. Um, it doesn't show much. It shows behind the camera footage, but you finally get to see kind of like what they look in the suits. Uh, there's also like a, uh, they took a picture of them together, so it's really awesome. I can't wait. It's directed by F. Gary Gray, who's known for stuff like The Negotiator and The Italian Job. So I think he could do a good job with this movie. It's too bad Barry Sonnenfeld's not coming back. It's too bad Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones are coming back. But, you know, it's something really exciting to look forward to. And finally, we got the first look to Pedro Pascal in Wonder Woman 1984. It's basically him in a car, but Patty Jenkins released the first picture of Pedro Pascal. And it's really exciting because he's in Kingsman the Golden Circle. He's in that show Narcos. Uh, he's a great actor. I can't wait for him. I can't wait for this movie. I enjoyed Wonder Woman up to the third act, so I hope they fix the problems in this movie. So we'll see. That's pretty much it. Once again, comment below. Tell us what you think. The last news story, and this might take a little bit of time, Movie Pass. We're back to that again. I'm sorry. I know people don't like hearing about Movie Pass, but we got to talk about it. Over the weekend... I, sent you, I put a video up about how MoviePass basically wouldn't allow people to go see Mission Impossible Fallout on Thursday because they ran out of money. So, throughout the weekend, once again, they, weren't, they got the money, they reinstated the servers, and now people couldn't even see Mission Impossible during the weekend. That's a big problem, right? 
Mission Impossible, biggest movie of the weekend, $61 million, 65, whatever it was. So Monday rolls around, which is today, or no, actually Sunday, because it was after I posted the uh, news report. Or no, no, yeah, I'm sorry, it was Monday. It was Monday. So it was Monday. We find out that not only has the servers gone down again, but that everything is completely grayed out, and there's not even movies listed on the app. So you can't even go see movies. So the head of MoviePass basically had a, a meeting, like a, a um, emergency meeting, as it's called, and what happened was he basically said, for the first few weeks of the movie, of the big budget movie release, you're not even going to be able to see the movie. Well, think about that. Christopher Robin's coming out, The Meg's coming out. They're not as big as Mission Impossible, but if it happened during Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible came out, you would not be able to see those movies for at least two weeks. Or, I think they said something about you could pay $8 for surcharges. And then, over the last week of last week, which I found out, there was a thing called reverse stock option. Basically, it was, say you have three shares of something, they condense that down to one, so it basically inflates the price of the stock and keeps it up to you know a higher price so they don't get delisted from NASDAQ. Well, what happened was it went up to $21 a share. Within the day, it was down to $8 a share, and by Monday, it was at $0.87 cents a share. It bombed so hard that your shares of MoviePass, if it were to like go back to normal, it'd be worth a fraction of a cent. And it might have dropped anymore. I haven't looked. It might have dropped farther. So basically, MoviePass has, in all their infinite wisdom, decided that, oh, we're not going to let people see movies. So, for, you know, when they first come out. So you're paying 10 bucks a month for basically second-run movie theaters is what's going on. And then we learned today on Tuesday that MoviePass is finally raising their prices, which they should have done a long time ago. But I think it's too late. I don't think charging $15 a month is going to help anything. And it's going to make even people even more mad because they've already screwed over so many people. So what's this going to change? $5 more a month? Is that really going to change anything? Like I heard on some uh, podcasts like John Campia, we'll see if it even lasts till October. I actually agree with him. So check out his podcast about what he said about MoviePass yesterday. So the point of the matter is MoviePass, I understand if you don't like A-list. I understand if you don't have AMCs around you. But if you do and you have a decent AMC, go get A-list. Get rid of MoviePass. I'm sorry. I know MoviePass is cheaper. I know it offers a better deal where you see it. But now you can't even see the movie before it comes out. I mean, before when it comes out. You have to wait two weeks, like an AMC, you know, those passes they used to give out where they have restrictions. What's the point in paying $10 if you can't even see the movie, like they say, every day? So with that said, you know, I'm not happy about it, but I'm glad I got rid of it. So with that, that's pretty much everything on the movie news of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like what you see, go ahead and rate, subscribe, tell us what you think. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to Audio Boom. Uh, we just posted the new podcast episode, which is uh, Firing of uh, James Gunn. We also, I also did reviews for Teen Titans uh, Go to the Movies and also Trailer Reacts to Venom, which I just posted. So check that out. Tell us what you think. Subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Peace. Thank you.